there are many fighters who could have been crowned the greatest. But none other has grown the sport more than he has. Buakao, the biggest name in Muay Thai recent history, an inspiration for its people, an icon for the fighters around the world, a man, a myth, a legend. In a career spanning less than 30 years, the Thai fighter has become the face of a century-old sport, achieving worldwide fame and bringing the interest for the Thailand national sport out of the country for good. A phenomenon that cannot be explained by his fighting skills alone, but by a story of resilience and pure love for the martial art. My name is Alex, and today in Pure Striking, we're taking a deep dive into Buakao's story and its meteoric rise to the pinnacle of Muay Thai. Sombat, known today as Buakao, takes gloves on for the first time in a local event held near his home, a small farming village in the rural province of Surin. Little is known about its first feats of arms, no records nor archives. Sombat allegedly won on point, taking home 100 baths, about two US dollars, 50 cents. Of his words, this experience forged his will to become a fighter. By the age of 12, the Surin prodigy has already participated in 100 fights across the province. Looking to recruit young Thai boxers to fight under his banner, Pramuk Rochanatan set his eyes on the young Sambat, who soon moved to his camp, the poor Pramuk Jim, about 50 kilometers from the capital and Mecca of Muay Thai, Bangkok. Sombat will be given the name of Buakao, the White Lotus in Thai, a synonym of purity of mind, body, and spirit. Eight petals for eight limbs, fists, knees, shins, and elbows. Limbs who will soon spread terror and desolation in the ring. An art that he will perfect through pain, training between eight to 10 hours a day, six days per week, year after year. This insane regiment, who is still pretty common in Thailand, is the only way to have a chance to rub shoulders with the best, which he will. After competing at a national level for seven years, now a grown man of 19 years old, Buakao entered in 2001 the Omnoy Stadium for its first title shot, the Omnoy Featherweight title. Thailand has hundreds of Muay Thai stadiums, the most prestigious being in Bangkok. Fighters have to prove themselves in smaller stadiums first before being able to compete at the elite level. That night, Waka proved his worth. He imposed himself in the ring with great skill, enough to bring back to his gym the featherweight title belt. A first achievement that will shed light on him. It won't be the last. The same year, he was offered the privilege of fighting for the Muay Thai highest regarded title of all, the Lumpany title. The Lumpany Stadium is considered the epitome of greatness. Muay Thai fighter ultimate goal. Chali Sorchaitamin, Buakao's valiant opponent, had the upper hand. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any footage of this fight. If you know where to watch it, please share it with us in comments. But this defeat did not discourage Buakal. He returned to the Omnoy Stadium a few months later, this time in a higher weight division, in search of a new belt, the Omnoy lightweight title. The opponent stood his ground, but could not stop the relentless White Lotus. Another belt was attached to Buakal's reeds. His pure moment of glory came soon after when he overcame the Toyota Marathon 140-pound Lumpany Tournament, his first and only title in the iconic stadium. This remains to this day his greatest victory on Thai soil, a tour de force to redeem for letting his first chance slip through his fingers. If it's true it was an interesting start, it surely was not enough to see his name pinned alongside those of the Thai elites. He was a man, about to become a myth. K1 in 2004, while being on a killing win streak of 10, Buakao broke away from traditional Muay Thai and entered the non-Thai dominated sport of K1. The Japanese kickboxing promotion was on a rise, dragging some of the biggest names of the sport. Buakao was not supposed to be one of them. His camp senior Namsaknoi was. At the time, the man known as the Emperor of Muay Thai was undefeated for six years at the highest level, including a victory against the well-known Sanchai. He, not Buakao, was scheduled to compete in the K1 World Max Tournament. As we already know, fate had another plan. Injured at the time of the tournament, Buakao replaced his brother-in-arms at short notice. Jordan Tai and Buakao Paramuk. The highly selective event only welcomes the best of the best. 
Bukau's authentic straightforward style, pure mastery of the basics and his brute strength, were more than enough to get a place in the eight contenders, annihilating the New Zealand fighter in the open. What separated him from the final, however, were big challenges. Beginning with John Wayne Parr, the ten-time world Muay Thai champion put up a tough fight that gave Buakao a run for his money. Three rounds were not enough to decide which of the two fighters deserved their place in the semifinals. Judges asked for an extra round. Both gave it their best shot, staying on their feet until the end. Strikes were thrown and taken. The Thai came out victorious, but not without immense respect for the gunslinger. He advances to the next stage. Facing him this time is the well-rounded Takayuki Kohiru Imaki. The K1 tournament is held in an eight-way elimination format. Three rounds of three-minute bouts determine who will continue the tournament. No second chance, the winner meets the winner. All the fights take place on the same night. To get his hands on the belt, the man must win three fights in one day. Kohiru Imaki was ranked number two in kickboxing in Japan at the time. Bukao stopped him early in the second round showing that he was ready to face the number one, and by a twist of fate, he would meet him in the final. He met in final a star in the land of the rising sun, Masato, a fight that changed K1 face. Despite being the huge underdog, Bukao put on a pure clinic, dominating the ring like a lion in a cage. Ruthless, relentless, brutal. The White Lotus injected his venom, draining every ounce of Masato energy. Once again, a fourth round was called for by the judges. A controversial decision after a clear win for Buakao. Masato showed pure heart in the final round, but could not steal the title from the tie. Buakao won the prestigious title, and with it the hearts of fans all over the world. That same year, changes in K1 rules limited the clinch to one knee, partially depriving the White Lotus of one of his favorite weapons. Many see it as a way for Japan to recover from the defeat of its champion, but it was already too late. Buakao's first title in Japan has starved the lion. 2005, Buakao reached the final again, this time against Andy Sauer, a furious Dutch fighter. He lost in a split decision that remains the subject of debate to this day. Many fans around the world accused the Japanese judges of corruption, trying, they claimed, to prevent Buakao from taking control of the promotion. If this was the case, it wasn't enough. He avenged himself the very next year, becoming the first fighter to win the K1 World Max title twice. In 2010, he knocked at the door of a new world, entering the Shootboxing S-Cup World Champion. Shootboxing is the fusion of kickboxing and wrestling in a stand-up martial art on steroids. Its particular format authorizes kicks, punches, knees, elbows, but also throws and standing submissions such as chokes, arm locks, and wrist locks. Wukao defeated again, relying exclusively on Thai clinch, he managed to stop three fierce competitors in one day, including Toby Amada, whom he simply annihilated. Remember him? This is the guy who put Masvidal out of action with the now famous reverse triangle choke. But that's another story. Japan conquered. It was time for Bwaka to unleash the beast into unknown territory. A myth was forged, a legend about to be written. Bwaka found his man, Yi Long, the Shaolin monk warrior. The two pure-hearted fighters stepped into the ring for what is being called the fight of the century. It lives up to its name. The Thai approached the fight with his usual calm, typical of traditional Muay Thai, while the Chinese was more energetic and chaotic. Driven by the same desire to push forward, running was not an option, and it's fair to say that both enjoyed the fight as much as the fans. Buakao defeated the unpredictable Kung Fu trained fighter on points, but he knew he'd see him again soon. Faith was sealed. They met again a year later. This time, Yi Long had the upper hand. The judge's decision was unanimous. Yet this was not clearly demonstrated during the fight. In fact, it was the opposite. From the words of Buakao coach Tirawat Yo Yim, reported in the Bangkok Post, the event and the Chinese boxer were under heavy criticisms, and many Chinese viewers walked out of the venue. The combat press goes one step further, Awarding this fight its 2016 Robbery of the Year. This was the second and last time Buakao bent the knee on Chinese soil. Buakao fought for three years in Kunlun Fight, a relatively new Chinese kickboxing promotion at the time, but among one of the highly regarded. He will have nine fights, the rest is history.
Guacao's success in China has not only solidified his status as one of the top kickboxers in the world, but helped to raise the profile of Thai fighters on the international stage and give another proof of the effectiveness of Muay Thai. And he did that, continuing adding titles to its collection, inspiring youth to follow in his footsteps, and training them. Some in the Banchamek gym he has set up in Surin, some in the Buakau village he will set up later. An undoubtedly legacy that he made a promise to himself to consolidate by protecting the reputation of Muay Thai. There are many topics that I could have covered today. I could have talked about the controversy with poor Pramuk Jim, or why Buakau suddenly quit K1 organization or other less glorious battles. But I wanted to show how and why he brought more international interest in Muay Thai than any other Muay Thai fighters ever had. This is Boka. More than 240 victories. A man, a myth, a legend. All right, thanks for watching. If you like this short documentary on Boka, please like, comment, and subscribe. It means a lot. We're seeing us in another video, hopefully soon.